the home buying process. It's not a very difficult process, but it's just so you know how to get through and buy a home and successfully move into that home. My name is Dave Broadworth, and I'm with Exit Strategy Realty. I'm a licensed realtor in Michigan, and so most of this will apply to every state in the United States. So here we go. First things first, you want to meet your realtor, and the best way to get a realtor is really a referral by a friend, know the realtor, or at least interview a few realtors to find the realtor that's going to be best for you. That's the start. The next thing after you've got the realtor, you want to get a pre-approval for your mortgage. As long as you're not buying it cash, if you're buying cash, you're going to have to hit proof of funds to show the seller so they know that the offer that you make, you're going to be able to back that up. And that's basically what the pre-approval letter is for. So that if they go and they accept an offer from you, they know the bank is willing to lend you money and they won't get into the process and all of a sudden you're not able to complete the deal and they have to put the home back on the market. So the first thing first, get a pre-approval. Next is get the offer accepted. Now in the today's market, you're gonna see a lot of homes that have uh, multiple offers on the home. If you're getting a situation with a multiple offer, it's very important to have a realtor that knows the negotiation process. Because if not, you're gonna get very upset after you've submitted three or four offers and you've gotten beat out on every one of those. So you wanna be able to get an offer accepted, okay? So it's very important that you work with a realtor that can negotiate for you and negotiate properly. So once we get an offer accepted, the fun is starting, but it also is just as important. Because one of the things you do is I always make sure that my clients walk through the house twice before we write an offer. The reason being, you don't want to write an offer, get it accepted, and get to the next step. Which is going to be the home inspection. Because a lot of times you can you know, see the things that might be a problem in the home, but not necessarily always pick them all out, depending on how thorough you and your realtor are at finding issues in a home. So after you get the offer accepted, it's the home inspection. And I highly suggest that you have a checklist also, so that as you're going through the home with the home inspector, you can check off things that they're doing to make sure that the home inspector did everything that they should have done that day and didn't happen to miss one because they're in a hurry to get to the next home inspection. Your realtor will know different home inspectors if you don't know one already or aren't, you know, don't feel comfortable picking your own home inspector. So ask your realtor, who are the home inspectors that you use? I myself have gone through a few different home inspectors because after sometimes you'll find that they're not as thorough as what you thought they were and that's not who you want dealing with your clients. So we did the home inspection. Typically, I tell my clients that we're looking for health and safety issues. The reason being, you know, if we start nitpicking and we ask for money off, or we ask for little things to be fixed, the homeowner is not going to do it. They're going to say, no, you saw the house, you offered this house, I want this amount of money. And if you start to negotiate, there is the possibility that the homeowner has a backup offer and they'll tell you, sorry, you started to negotiate again. I'm going to go with this other offer. And you know what? Your realtor better inform you that that is a possibility because you don't want to be in a situation where you asked for um, something to be fixed. The homeowner said no and bye bye. So know what the home inspection is for typically health and safety issues. So the next thing is, we got the home inspection done, completed. Anything that needed to be fixed was taken care of. The next thing is, you should have already applied for your mortgage. If you have it, you want to apply for it now because we're in a time crunch. Everything is time is of the essence. 
once you get the uh, home inspections done, the mortgage applied for, then the lender is going to, you know, have an appraisal done for the bank. And the appraiser works for the bank. He does not work for the buyer or she works for the bank because it is up to them to make sure that there is enough equity in this house is worth, you know, what we think it's worth for the lender to loan the money because they don't want to be in an upside down position just in case the house went back to foreclosure. So the appraiser comes in, he compares this house to other houses that have sold in the last six months typically, and within a certain radius, similar homes. As long as he finds that the value is equal to that or more than the purchase offer that you wrote, the house is appraised and that's all it has to be. It's the same doubt. If it doesn't appraise, then we're kind of back into negotiations because either you have to come up with the difference of the money between the appraisal and what the uh, purchase offer was. We can get the homeowner to come down to what the appraisal was or we negotiate something in between. And if none of those can be accomplished, the buyer can back out of the deal and get their earnest money deposit back. Hopefully it appraises or if it doesn't appraise, everything goes smooth and you're proceeding with the home purchase. After that, it's about a two week wait or so, just because the lender's getting everything wrapped up and what's happening is it goes back into what they call underwriting. Underwriters kind of work for the lender. They wanna make sure that everything that is coming is accurate and that was provided by the buyer and all the documents that you had to prepare, there's no problems with the appraisal, they like the appraisal, and then it's gonna come out of underwriting. When it comes out of underwriting, we are almost there. We're coming down the home stretch and you're about ready to own a home. The law has changed a few years ago and the lenders have to give the buyer three days to review final documents before they can close on the deal. So. Once you're given three days to close on the deal, we schedule the closing and voila, you're buying a home, you're happy, the seller's happy, and pretty soon you're on your way to moving in and we've got this deal closed. Every now and then, because the way the market is today, the homeowner is going to need some time to move out. And that's called possession after closing. It might You might move into the house right away, you might wait 30 days or somewhere in between. That's all part of what was written into the offer, just so that you know that, that you might not move in right at closing, but you'll know when you write the offer how soon you're going to be in the house after you've paid your money for it. If the buyer or if the seller does stay there, they will pay you rent based on your mortgage so that the house is not costing you any money during this period of time. Mm -hmm. 